Hey, 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 Facebook Live, how you doing? Nicole Cooper here, and want to holler at y'all real quick and talk to you guys about the power of releasing people out of your life. So if you are just joining us, hello, go ahead and share this video. Sitting here listening to this real good song with Andre 3000, Jay-Z. It's real hot, real hot, ATL life, right? All right, y'all, so want to hop on here real quick um, just to holler at you guys about the power of releasing people out of your life. You know, I was just coming back from running some errands and driving around the city and thinking about the fact that this is December 2017, uh, where we're going into 2018, and just like kind of really just thinking through what this year has been like, like all the ups and downs, challenges, ins and outs, the waves, the, you know, just, just, just life. Life is life, right? Um, hey, Monica. So thinking about all this year, all the things that I've encountered, but also thinking about all the, the relationships that have come to a close, um, from friendships to, you know, uh, just, just a series of relationships to industries, to, uh, different kinds of connections in different formats and thinking about how sometimes in life, Hey Deb, good morning. Um, thinking about how in life, sometimes we can live our life for people. Meaning, Hey Stacy, meaning that we are, we want to be accepted and we want to be adored and we want people to love us and we want people to, to, you know, like we don't want to be, nobody wants to be rejected but guys, there is power in releasing people. And I was talking to my cousin yesterday just about just changes that we're going through in our life and, you know, the the way that I view them. And she was like, does it make you sad when you deal with stuff like that? And I'm like, no, because here's what I've discovered, you guys. And here's um, something that I feel when you get to this point in your life and you can start really getting a sense of confidence about it, you stop worrying about all the external situations and you focus on what you need to do for you. Even if that means letting certain relationships and letting certain people go. You know, what I've discovered about the world that we live in, y'all, is that we are here on this earth for a very short period of time. I mean, very short period of time. The Bible says that your life is but a vapor, meaning it comes and it goes so fast. You know, you, you, you're here today and, and I'm even thinking about my life now. I'm like, good God, you know, here it is. I turned 40 this year and I literally, I am i would have been on my 20 year college uh, reunion, but I had to do an extra two years. I was a super duper senior, but here it is. I would have been out of college for 20 years. I still thought that I was in my 20s in my head, but nah, boo, you got kids now. You have a different level of responsibility. You're older. Life is changing. You got to make different decisions. You know, you can't be running around here recklessly. You have to start doing things that are going to truly benefit your retirement now. Like, I'm in, in your 40s. You got to start thinking retirement. Like, I'm 20 years from 60. You know what I mean? What, where do I want to be in 20 years? What do I want to accomplish? And when I think about the fact that our life is here but a vapor, one of the things that I shared with my cousin, I said, I understand that my life is about an assignment, right? I am on this earth for an assignment. There is a mission that I am called to accomplish. And even though I don't always know every single aspect of what that mission is and what that assignment is, what I do know is when I'm in alignment and out of alignment, right? Meaning we all have these internal radars to let you know when something is going in the right direction and when something doesn't feel right. Guys, sometimes we get into relationships with people that are so far out of alignment that everything about our encounter with them is a disturbance to your spirit. From the conversations that you have to the tension that is created in the environment that both of you are in to, I mean, it's just like all across the board, you can sense that something's not right about this relationship. But unfortunately, we live in a world where we tend to think that something may be wrong with me. Now, something can be wrong with you, but it's not always about you or them. It's about the spirit in which you are connected to people. I believe I believe truly in spiritual alignment and spiritual connections. And there are certain people that you just meet that you're like, something don't sit right with me about this connection. The person may be a wonderful person. 
maybe a beautiful person, maybe an awesome person can impact a lot of people's lives and all this stuff. But that encounter with them and you just does not resonate. Like it's something that is not there. However, sometimes we force things to happen. And guys, listen, I'm talking about relationships too. You know, you can be connected to somebody that you've been dating for years and you know, like, mm, this really don't feel right, but I'm scared to be alone or I put so many years into it. I want to go ahead and make it work. Or, you know, what if I walk away and somebody else gets him or her and the relationship ends up being a beautiful one? What have I missed out on? We can tend to talk ourselves into things that our spirit is telling us to run away from. And what I've learned, guys, is, is that the, the, the more in tune you can get with being in alignment, the more you'll realize in every aspect of your life what is in alignment and what is out of alignment and how to remove those things that are not in alignment. And that's relationships, too. If you are in relationships with people and... There's sometimes guys where we put ourselves in abusive situations with people. And when I say abusive, it's like they don't respect you, they don't honor you, they don't cherish you, they don't appreciate you. And it and you may not do the same thing, right? But there's no respect for you and that person across the board, but you tolerate each other. I remember ET always would say, "Go where you're um go where you're appreciated, not where you're tolerated." Too many of us are in relationships that we tolerate. We just deal with them just because either we're scared to be alone, we're scared to walk away, we've put too many years into it. We, you know, we're worried about what happens if I walk away, what was what what will, you know, what will come out of it? What if I'm missing out on something? Let me tell you guys about the beauty of releasing people. And this is what I'm just discovering. It's like when you release people, it's almost like sometimes certain people, not everybody, but I tell people, I, I say all the time, people can either bring out the best in you or the worst in you. And you have to start asking yourself, who do I have in my circle and what do they bring out of me? Are they bringing out the best in me or are they bringing out the worst in me? If you have people around you that are bringing out the worst in you, when you release them, what happens is it's like a backpack full of rocks that you take off of your shoulders where you're starting to be freed up. You you get this sense of clarity. You begin to see things differently. You you It's like a joy that comes back into your life because sometimes, guys, you can have people in your circle that have a black cloud over them. Their, their mood, everything about them is just dissension. They're, you know, they're always aggravated. They're always frustrated. They're always fussy. They're always pessimistic. Life is horrible. They have these real crazy, you know, attitudes about life that become viral. They become contagious. If they're constantly in your environment and constantly in your atmosphere, what happens is they will kill the mood. They will damper the spirit. If you are in a, a room with somebody and everything that they say is negative, what's going to happen is even though you want to be optimistic, you're going to get so mad at them that you're going to start becoming negative because of them being in the room. And you have to start asking yourself like, who do I have in my atmosphere and what kind of impact are they having in my environment and how in the heck can I get rid of them? Like, you know, I, I listen, I love people and I appreciate people, but some people do not deserve to have access to my life, my gift, my calling, my assignment or my time, right? And I've learned over the years and I'm learning even more and more now in this day, this day and, and stage is that I don't owe people anything. It is not my assignment on the earth to get people to want to like me or to please people to want want to appreciate me. It is my my birthright on this earth and same for you is whoever you have been uh, assigned to impact that is willingly able to receive you, you commit to that impact. The Bible even tells you if you go to somebody, um, it's in, in Matthews, when they say you go to somebody and you want to, you, you go to uh, share the message with them. And if they don't receive you, you shake the dust off your feet and you keep it moving. You don't sit up there and you try to convince somebody why they should receive the gift that you have to bring to them. You know, and he was talking to the disciples who would go and walk, you know, from, 
from city to city preaching the gospel of Christ. And he was like, if you go to people's doors and they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving. It is not your responsibility to convince people, compel people, or try to ask people to want to have what you have to offer. The secret in life, guys, is to know when it, when to give your gift to somebody and when to pull that bad boy back and say, oh, they don't deserve it. You know, the Bible even tells you don't cast your pearls before swine. Sometimes we try to stay in these relationships where people don't covet or appreciate what it is that we bring to the table and we just keep pouring out and pouring out trying to convince them you should you should want what i have you should love me you should you know i'm great i'm amazing you should really see this hey do you see it yet do you realize that i'm awesome do you realize that i'm i'm a gift in your life do you well hey can i do some more for you for you to really get to like me now nah, screw that you know what your time is so critical and so valuable your gift is so powerful that you don't have the time to give who you are and what you have to people that don't appreciate you don't honor you don't cherish you don't don't respect you and don't deserve you right and and we live in this world where people try to tell us to you know just stick it out just stick around maybe their heart will change well guess what when they heart change they gonna have to come back and audition for me because everybody in your life is auditioning for you to let you know if they are deserving of your time of your energy of your effort and the ability to share in the gifts that God is giving you and we have to know when somebody has failed the audition when I gone from LA I used to be in the acting and when you go on an audition you have these hallways filled with people I mean beautiful people everybody got their head shots some got the scripts you know some people have different years of experience been on different movies and and been in different shows they got access to different people they all got different networks I mean it's like a a whole pool of talent lined up in the auditions for people who are coming to audition for this one role but it doesn't matter how beautiful you are how many people they know you know how great their head shots are if they are not a good fit for that role guess what access denied and they got to go and if there's another opportunity for them to audition again for a role that is fitting for them great but you did not earn the role for this audition some of you guys are allowing people access to you who not only failed the audition but they don't fit they 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 don't even deserve to be called on to even audition because they're not wanting the role that you're trying to get them to play in your life you're trying to convince them and compel them that they should come be this person in your life that they don't even want to be we have to stop begging people to want to show up in a role that they did not audition for and if they do audition for us if they do go ahead and show up with their head shots and they ready to say that I'm, I'm I'm willing to invest to see if I am deserving of this relationship of your time. Even if they audition and they still don't fit the role, we got to know where to place people in our life. You see, you have different circles for people, right? So imagine you got the inner circle here. You have another circle outside of that. A third, uh, a, let's select, you got the inner, that's one. You have the outer, that's two. And you have another one, that's three. And then you have that, that the world, right? So think about it in these different levels. Well, guys, people have to earn their way from that outer circle to get into your inner circle. You know, that outer circle is everybody you pass on the streets. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Nice to meet you. All oh, your shoes are so cute. Thank you. Nice to meet you, right? That's that outer circle. But then you go into this second layer where it gets a little bit more cordial. I may work with you. Hey, how you doing, Stacy? Good to see you, girl. You know what? I noticed in the meeting that you mentioned X, Y, and Z. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? You're still very, very cordial with them. You're not sitting here sharing all your business. You're not being super transparent. You're not asking them to come over to your house and have wine or coffee with you. You're just having a conversation to get to know them, right? They get into that second layer of getting to know. Now, if Stacy's in the second layer and I'm coming to her and I'm, you know, Know, talking to her and I'm I'm expressing some things and I say you know what I, I can I get a little bit more information from you about X Y and Z and so she's like sure let me tell you whatever it is that you need and she starts pouring into me now that relationship is becoming of value because we're talking we're connecting there's a contribution there's an exchange there is like a oh yes yeah, Stacy is game she's awesome I see that I, me and Stacy can build something because we can help each other she has some things that I I can let, use from Stacy and I have some things that I can share with her that'll be beneficial to me so now 
Stacy is in this second layer. She's still auditioning. We're seeing where this relationship can go. And then Stacy may say, well, hey, what? You know what, Nicole? I know we don't have a lot of time now, but do you want to meet up? Maybe we can meet at Starbucks or something like that. And let's connect. And you can sit down and tell me more about what it is that you're trying to do. And I'll show you. I'll share with you whatever it is that I need to know. Well, Stacy's in this second layer of getting to know. She's still in that getting to know, but she's on that border of going into the third layer because I'm going to meet up with Stacy. I'm going to sit down with her. I'm going to have some one-on-one -on -one time. I'm going to share with her what my scenario is and you know this is what I'm trying to do and if we're sitting there at this this uh, uh, Starbucks and Stacy is starting to share and she's like, okay, Nicole, look, let me map this out for you. Let me show you what I did, how I did it. This is how this works. As a matter of fact, let me give you a couple of connections of people that I know that can help you and really take you to the next level. And she starts doing all this stuff. All of a sudden, I'm like, asset, asset, asset. Stacy is an asset. Stacy is somebody that I want in my phone because Stacy is somebody that is contributing and pouring into my life in a way that I'm like, I need her in my circle, right? Right? So now Stacy then went from to, from that second layer to the third layer. It's like, oh, okay, I need to know Stacy. I need to spend more time with Stacy. As a matter of fact, Stacy, is there anything that I can do for you? Is there any need that you have? Is there any way that I can help elevate you? So now Stacy done made it to the third circle. She's not in the inner circle yet, but she's in that third circle of I can call on her and begin to talk to her and build a relationship with her and get to know her even more and see how we can be contributing factors into our lives, right? Now Stacy got to earn her way into my inner circle where she get to know my business, she come to my house, she do this and that and the other, but Stacy's gonna stay in this third circle for a little while until we get to know one another. But then there are other people. There are other people who are in your life. They are in this outer circle. You get to know them. And you talk to them. Hey, girl, how you doing? Your shoes are so cute. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just got them from such and such. Well, you know what? Let me ask you a question real quick. I've been trying to figure this out. Do you know anybody who can be able to do this? Nah, girl, you ain't going to find nobody that can really be able to help you with that. If I was you, I wouldn't even waste my time. They just start going in a whole nother direction. Guess what? They done failed the audition. They done failed because their mindset, their conversation already is becoming a liability into my life because that conversation is already driving draining from the first couple of words from the size from the huh, girl if I was you I wouldn't even waste my time oh you don't oh you don't belong in my circle because I don't want to hear about the negative I want to hear about the empowerment like what uh, what insight do you have what kind of things can you contribute about this scenario that I need assistance with that will be an elevation to my not, my life not be a reduction of energy out of my life and it's the same thing for relationships and when you date somebody y'all listen cute ain't good enough a good man ain't good enough uh, a, a good job ain't good enough a great income ain't good enough you know uh, uh he he admires you is not good enough when it comes to a relationship that's a whole nother conversation it's about a business partnership it's about what can we build together what do we desire to grow together what can we talk about with our future together how can we elevate together how can we sow into each other together how can i mean it's a whole nother level when you get to relationship and intimacy and that next level of, of, of growth and connection is a whole nother conversation. I'm not going to even get into that. That's a whole different day. But I want you guys to understand the power of releasing people because, see, listen, if I start allowing a bunch of negative people into my life to have access to me, what happens is, is you only have so much of a tank, right? You know, my, my one of my mentors always say, that you give out of your overflow, not your resources, right? So imagine your life. This is a cup that I have here. And imagine your life is like a cup. And what happens is, is everybody who comes into your life, they either take out of your cup or they either pour into your cup. If I allow a bunch of people into my life that every time I get connected to them, I'm losing something and my cup starts getting depleted and I'm pouring out and I'm pouring out and I'm pouring out and I'm pouring out. Next thing you know, my tank is on E, but I don't have a circle of people around me to help fill my cup up because I've given too many people access who don't deserve it that all they do is deplete me and pull from me and take from me and, 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 and just exhaust exhaust me. But when I start removing them people who are taking from me out of my life and I start opening up my cup for the right people who can pour into my life, what happens now is people come and they're going to start bringing value into my life and they're going to start sharing and they're going to start sewing. And next thing you know, I meet, I meet Stacy, Stacy pouring into my life. I meet Sherry, Sherry's pouring into my life. I meet Miko, she's pouring into my life. I meet Erica, she's pouring into my, now my cup is getting full. And then 
somebody else come around and they try to take from my life and I'm like, whoa, you got to go. It's time to release you because you taking, you starting to deplete my cup. I need to make sure my cup stay full. So, so let's say Sandy come into my life and she trying to, she trying to take, 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 take. Oh, Sandy, you got to go. I'm sorry. But let me go ahead. Let me pour that Thorah come into my life. I'm starting to fill my cup. You have people around you that are filling your cup. You start getting more and more people into your life and they're pouring into your cup. Now you do, you start having enough to start pouring into others. Everybody's not going to pour into your life. You may be assigned to pour into other people's lives, but it doesn't mean that just because I pour into you, you're going to have all this access to me. You see, guys, we get confused about friendships and relationships we get confused we get confused about who's supposed to be in your inner circle versus who are those that are assigned to you for a season they say people are in your life for a reason a season or a lifetime you just might be designated to be into somebody's life for a season but that may not be your lifetime friend so you you pour into them and you share what you can but guess what they're going through relationship and you telling them hey there's some changes you need to make i'm gonna share with you some things that i've learned i'm gonna pour out i'm gonna give you you know i'm gonna give you what i can but hey it's up to you to receive it. And then this person is like, well, you know what, girl, thank you. But can you keep giving? Can you? Because right now I don't want to make that decision. I don't want to walk away yet. I don't want to release myself from that yet. And they just want to keep taking. You start realizing, look, I came, I dropped this off for you. Whatever you do, what I give you is great, but you're going to have to, I'm not giving you no more of my time. I need my cup to be full. So I'm going to go back to the people who are going to fill my cup. And I'm only going to sow into those who are willing to take what I give them and begin to use it to begin to fill other people's cups. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to fill your cup but you got to know what your assignment is in different people's lives and you also need to understand guys that you only have so much capacity for people in your life if you give too many people access to your inner circle and those people do nothing but pull, 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 pull. Then your tank is going to end up on E. And you're going to be asking yourself, why am I always exhausted? Why am I always drained? Why am I always, my life always falling apart? Why does it seem like when I need somebody, ain't nobody there? Well, because you only got people who take it from you. You don't have nobody filling your cup. There is no overflow in your life. You don't have people around you that are resources. You don't have people that are, 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 are appreciative of you and sowing back into you and receiving you and and believing in you, you just have people who take and they take and they take and all they want to do is deplete your cup. And guess what? When they empty your cup, they're going to look for 10 more people cup to empty. They're going to keep going around and emptying this person's cup and that person's cup and that person's cup. And next thing you know, this person will rob 10, 15 people of every resource they have because that's what they do. They go ahead and they suck up every resource that other people have because they have no intentions for building true, valuable relationships. All they do is suck up up out of your life so you got to know how to take your time back take your life back make sure you put yourself only in positions that will fill your cup and begin releasing people because the more you release people you guys the more you make room for others to come into your life to begin to fill your cup so i hope this helps y'all i can go on and on about it but i will say this since i have released people out of my life it's like my life is lighter it's like I can see things differently. I feel like I'm getting my mojo back. I realized that people were around me sucking all my resources, sucking my, sucking my, 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 my everything about me. Like it just, it was just draining. It was like if they can't get me to, to, to see life the way that they see it, they're going to just nip and nip and nip and take and take and take until I wake up one morning with nothing left. No belief, no confidence, no, you know, no drive, no ambition, a, a negative mindset to think that the way that they think is actually the way life is is and giving up on my dreams giving up on my hopes screw that i will put everybody out of my life if i ain't got but one friend until i'm around the right circles of people so that i can make sure that i protect my vision my goal my calling my assignment and make sure that i am in alignment with what it is that god has called me to do if y'all are in relationships and y'all know that thing does not feel right and everybody trying to convince you that you got to make it work and you know you should just give them another try and you should keep the people in your life because they just having a hard time right now listen it is not your responsibility to to play the role of jesus christ or god in people's lives you can pray for them, you can love on them, but you do it from a distance because God will save them. All you can do is sow a little seed and if they take it, fine. If they don't, keep it pushing and pray that God continues to intervene and do some miracles in their life. So guys, y'all need to figure out who it is you need to cut out your life. I've cut several people out this year. I ain't looking back. 
and I it, I am not emotional about it. If they come back into my life in, in another season, great. If they don't, it's been real. But I am so focused on being in alignment with my assignment that I am not going to be emotionally attached to people, things, or circumstances. But instead, I am fully committed to the call on my life to do the things that I know I've been ordained to do. And that means that I am going to be here to keep my cup full and continue to sow into lives of those that I've been assigned to, to fill their cup. So I hope that this helps y'all share this message with somebody. Some of y'all need to release some people because all they're doing is draining the life out of you. So y'all have a great and awesome weekend happy holidays i love the holiday season and we'll talk soon you guys nicole cooper here and i'll talk to y'all later bye